37 Illegal Things to Never Do in Minecraft. Minecraft is the most famous sandbox game out there. But even with that title, there's still some actions in the game that you should just flat out avoid. Whether it's breaking a spawner, going AFK in the nether, and really everything in between, it's on this list. Hey there folks, I'm Skip the Tutorial, and here we dive deep into playing games the wrong way. And hey, jumping in on behalf of the police chief to say that only 12.7% of you watching are subscribed. So, if you're looking for a way to support the channel, it's free, and it goes a long way. So, with that said, let's start cracking down on crime. Number 1. First to get out of the way is a pretty common one when you're first starting out, but if you're looking to pick up some valuables in the mine, always make sure your tool's up to code for the job, especially when you find some diamonds. Now, the prevailing wisdom for this is to use iron or above, but just keep in mind, that only applies to pickaxes. Number 2. Now, planting a crop field in Minecraft survival can take some work, so it makes sense that you'd want to defend it from any baddies that come by. But trust me, all the good you'll get from offing that monster won't outweigh how much you trampled the amber waves of grain. Use a ranged weapon for this situation, or just let it despawn. No need to trash your crops for it. Number 3. The Nether is no place to be reckless. In fact, there's plenty of hazards to worry about even when you're being safety slow, meaning if you chug a speed potion in the Nether, it's bound to be a bad time. Worst of this is that it's just such a waste of an opportunity. I mean, any other potion would work better in this situation. Well, at least some would. Number 4. Let's dive back into the mines for this one, because this is a misdemeanor that's sure to ruin your day. If you see a vein of diamonds, take the time to mine around them. Trust me, you'll want to do this. The fine for having no patience here can really start to hurt. Number 5. Alright, all you criminal masterminds, this one's for you. If you're looking to crank up the illegal factor on your Minecraft to sky high, it's simple. Just play with a pirated version. And if you're wondering why there's no footage of a cracked version here, listen, this is a video about you breaking the law. Not me. Number 6. If you've ever played on a skyblock map, you know just how important each resource can be. That's why there's absolutely no reason you should trash all of your grass blocks. It's painful enough losing a dirt block at the beginning. Getting rid of the grass top adds another insult to injury, since you're gonna have a tough time getting it back. Number 7. Say you're running on an empty stomach, and you're jonesing for some pork to fill your belly. Well, that's easy enough, since you've got yourself a pig farm, but don't let your eyes get too big for your stomach. Otherwise, you might just ruin your chances of repopulating after your greedy habits. If you're hungry for some bacon, leave at least two to work back from. Or better yet, breed them before killing. Number 8. Another serious offense around these parts is downloading some hacks for your Minecraft client. And while things like Automine and X-Ray are harmless in your single player world, it's a risky move to turn on your kill aura for PvP. And if you ask me, when you reach the point where you're resorting to aimbot on a Minecraft server, there's a lot more going wrong than just your gameplay. Number 9. This one's just painful to watch. Look, I'm all about building redstone in different locations, and sometimes it can even be really cool. But when you start throwing your pistons under a nearby lake, you've got to expect some issues. Like oil, redstone and water don't mix, and it's best to keep them as far away as possible so you don't wash away all of your hard work just like that. Number 10. All right, say you want to go exploring for a new base location. And hey, nobody really wants to run at night, so a bed would be a good call to pack. The only problem is, if you trash your home bed and bring it for the trip, you'll lose your spawn point if you bite the dust. This can hurt especially bad if your original base wasn't at world spawn, and now you've left hours of progress behind. When you see a monster spawner, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, if it's skeletons, then maybe you can build a big farm where you use the bone meal to make more trees and crops grow. Or if it's zombies, maybe you can get rotten flesh to trade with villagers and the like. But now you won't get to see any of that, because you trashed the spawner, now the only monster here is you. Number 12. Now that hardcore survival's back in the public eye, it really puts front and center just how many things you can do in a regular world that just don't fly in the harder mode. And the most egregious of which probably has to be looking before you leap in hardcore. Because breaking your legs might not be something in a regular world, but here, it means all the difference. And it could bring your journey to an early end. Number 13. After hours of looking for resources, you finally have something to put together in the crafting table. And while I know it is tempting to go for all diamond tools, especially if you already have most of the set, believe me, there is 100% no reason to ever make a diamond hoe. It's not going to make right clicking any easier. And if you're worried about durability for your hoe, really, how much are you planting? And secondly, stone and sticks is easy to come by any time of the month. 
Just put those diamonds to better use, okay? Number 14. Look, I get it. Sometimes when you're out and about, it's tough to come up with a decent snack. And if you have it, rotten flesh can actually work all right here. But if that's your last resort, then please just sit still for a minute, fill up your hunger bar, and then let the hunger effect go away. There's no point to continue running around, and especially none to just let the hunger bar only fill up part way. Go all the way, sit still for a second, and then move on with your hunger bar. Number 15. The homeowners association asked for this one. But if you're building a wooden house, there's plenty of ways that you can make it look good from the inside. And while I know it's tempting, maybe hold back from the fireplace, especially if you're not going to keep it up to code. Because one stray right click with a flint and tinder can make the whole place light up. And trust me, there's nothing worse than seeing hours of work go up in smoke and down like that. Number 16. After hours of playing Minecraft, you're bound to come up with some junk in your inventory. And while throwing your stuff into lava or a cactus is a good way to get rid of it, just please be careful while you're doing it. Because there's nothing worse than going through useless stuff in your inventory and all of a sudden chucking your trusty pickaxe right into the flames. And if you're gonna chuck all your good stuff into the lava so carelessly, then you might as well just send your whole self in. Number 17. This is one of the classic Minecraft testaments. But let's say after you found some good resources, you want to take your iron ore and get right out of the mine shaft. And while common geometry would say that the fastest way from point A to point B is a line, digging straight up might just prove that it's worth taking the extra minutes to build a staircase. You wouldn't want to lose all your stuff and the hours that came with it. Number 18. Say you're jaunting around your world when all of a sudden life kicks back in. Maybe you've got responsibilities to deal with, or you're just getting a little tired. Well, no worries, but if you're gonna go AFK, then you should have a reason behind it. Like hanging out at a fish farm or a mob spawner. But if you're just going AFK for no reason, then you're putting yourself in way too much danger. Especially on a multiplayer server where you can't just pause the game. If you gotta go away for a few minutes, just hit disconnect and come back to it later. Everything will be right where you left it, and you'll end up a lot more alive than the other way. Number 19. This one takes a bit of math to figure out, but after doing it this way, there's no way you'll go back to the old method. You see, a log and a plank burn the exact same amount of items, about one and a half, but obviously a log will give you four planks, so that'll give you way more efficiency for your buck. Or better yet, you can get charcoal by burning that same log, allowing you to smelt eight different items. And if you got some wood to burn, then the best way about it is using those two planks to burn three different logs, turning the four and a half items they would have smelted into 24. Number 20. As your Minecraft journey comes to a close, you'll need to hunt down the Ender Dragon by using different Ender Eyes to find the Stronghold. And while it's always a good idea to overpack an Ender Eyes, it doesn't mean you should just go throwing them willy-nilly multiple at a time. Because with how often these things can break, you'll just end up losing some that could have been used to help you on your path. Just throw one, let it go in that direction, follow it for a few blocks, and then chuck another. Don't double up. And especially don't 16 up. Number 21. While we're dealing with Enderman, please keep in mind to never shoot an arrow at one. At best, you're just not going to hit it. And if your aiming's as bad as mine, then all that time spent trying to line up a headshot is just going to get you killed. Just go up to the Enderman, get the first hit off, and then deal with the problem. Don't let it get to the advantage. Number 22. After hours of searching the sand, you'll finally come across that one desert temple to make you rich. And as you start to head down into the chamber and find all the loot, you'll probably feel like Indiana Jones. But unlike Indy, you chose the center, picked poorly, and now there's not going to be a sequel. Number 23. While mining some nether quartz in the second dimension, it might be a good idea to throw a bit of hesitation into your habits. Because if you start going reckless with your pickaxe, you might throw off just a few too many wrong swings. And that'll just get a certain group pretty mad at you. Number 24. Fighting a creeper in the water seems like a great idea, right? I mean, you don't have to worry about damage that it could do because if it explodes in the water, nothing happens. But here's the thing. When you're fighting one of the monsters in a nearby river, it's going to be pretty tough to escape it especially while melee fighting, and that's going to make your job a whole lot harder. While it might seem less appealing initially, it's much better to fight these things on land, because then you have better escape routes anywhere you look, as opposed to just trying to swim yourself away. Number 25. Alright, so I'll admit, I'm not that much of a builder. But if there's one building tip I know, it's that if you're going to make your house, even though it might look cool, make sure to put no holes open to the public. Because as nighttime comes along, those monsters will use every single nook and cranny to make sure that you don't get a good night's rest. Number 26. Now, Minecraft has plenty of ways to waste your resources. 
But one of the most subtle ones has to be making mundane or thick potions. Honestly, compared to awkward potions, these things are just straight duds. And even worse, they eat up valuable redstone and glowstone dust, which even though they're farmable through a witch farm, are not nearly as accessible as nether wart, and also just not as versatile. Number 27. Unfortunately, as good as dogs are in Minecraft, there's just no way to pet them. But even then, it's not much of a defense when you use a diamond sword to try and do it. Really, just stay on Peta's good side for this one, and leave the doggos be. Number 28. Look, I'm guilty of this one myself. If you've ever been in a cave and find yourself right out of torches, it might seem like a good idea to use that flint and steel you keep in your back pocket. But here's the thing, as it might work for a little bit on the way down, as soon as you're trying to retrace your steps back, all those fires will have burnt out. And while you can remedy this by carrying around some netherrack as well, I don't think that's the solution. Just craft some torches, leave them on the wall, and get your way out of there. Number 29. Look, I'm not one to go out searching for math all the time, but this one actually kind of shocked me. When put all together, rabbit stew is a pretty decent food source, and it can fill up your saturation quite a bit. But what's funny to me is that if you take the items from the stew and separate them out one by one, you actually get more benefit and more hunger filled. Not to mention, if you have another mushroom in that same bowl in your inventory, then you can get yourself a mushroom stew and go all the way. Really, there's no reason to craft this item except as a vanity thing. Number 30. After farming for hours at your AFK fish farm, you're sure to get plenty of loot. And while enchanted books sure are tempting, there's absolutely no reason to put cursed books on any of your valuable items. These books are pranks, there's little use to them. What's even worse is if you accidentally put one of them on, then you might just lose your pickaxe on death. And then that joke's gonna get a lot less funny. Number 31. If you're hungry and looking for ways to thin out your chicken farm, that's fine, it's a noise distraction. But if you're gonna do that, then maybe just use an ax for the job. Because with a sweeping edge sword, you're going to kill off way too many of the things. And you might just find yourself in a position of no return. Number 32. Picture the situation, all right? You're out walking about in the middle of the forest, when all of a sudden, oh, Look at that, a painting, just out in the middle of nowhere. Who would have thought? Everyone would have thought, because as soon as you go behind that painting, surprise, it's a secret base. I think we just gotta stop using paintings to hide our houses, because honestly, I've never seen a painting except for this secret reason. It's a dead giveaway for sure. Number 33. This one might seem a little confusing, but after wearing down your pickaxe to the bone in the mines, you might just find that it's better to repair it with a second pickaxe instead of using diamonds. Look at this right here. With individual diamonds, it cost me four, but with a pickaxe, it's just three and two sticks. And it even costs less experience to do. And for this reason, there's really not a case to just use diamonds to patch up your pickaxe. Number 34. Say you're one of the lucky ones, and oh, look at that, you found a jungle temple. And while it's easy to get distracted thinking about the crystal skull or golden idol you might find while you're down there, just keep in mind to look out for traps. And even me saying that, that's just too surface level to cut it. Because even if you catch a trip wire and break it with your fist, you're still going to activate the trap. And while sometimes it might just be a measly arrow, if a more clever trap maker got there first, you might be looking at a bit of a death. Instead, you should use a pair of shears to snip the wire and then move along. Grab yourself the treasure and bail out of that place. Number 35. Let's say you finally find it, that white whale, the Mooshroom Island. And hell, I get why you would want to bring back one of the mooshrooms. They're an excellent source of food. But if you're looking for mushrooms, there's absolutely no reason that you should be shearing these things. Because now you're left with just a cow, and worse yet, not even enough mushrooms for a full stew. All you need to worry about is finding a bowl for these things, because then you can milk it for stew. That'll keep you supplied and give you a much better ROI than just some measly cow. Number 36. Curing a zombie villager is a lengthy process. And I'll understand if it sometimes cuts into nighttime. But while it might be tempting to break your villager out of the cage as soon as you notice that it's healthy, just wait till morning. Because if a zombie comes by to that thing, you're just gonna undo all of your process. And start right back at square one for that matter. Number 37. Ah yes, the infamous classic. But if you're gonna dig straight down, then at least know the right way to do it. Either dig a 2 by one hole as a backup, or if you're gonna go down, maybe pack a water bucket or a fire resistance potion. Mining towards the Earth's core unprepared is just gonna go south quickly. And it's a crime to humanity and your health bar. But let's say that you've pulled off all 37 of these crimes, and now you're worried about your criminal record. Well, don't sweat it, because there's an easy get out of jail free card for you. Just plant a tree. Well. 
Maybe not just in game, but in real life too. With the Team Trees project, every dollar donated corresponds to a new tree in the soil. And with your help, we can reach 20 million trees planted by 2020. So go to teamtrees.org and donate today. And let's help get the world a little greener. And with that folks, click this one in the top right to see 23 ways to break Minecraft and have fun doing it. Or click down in the bottom right for another video. And if you liked this video, then make sure to subscribe to help support the channel in a free way. And with that folks, take care, you have a good one, alright?